Well, good morning, family. It is Monday morning. Welcome to God Conversations, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. Listen, let me see who's chiming in on this morning as we are getting started. Good morning, Jamie Garfield. Good morning, Wahiba Brown. Brother Reginald Darby, you are in my prayers, my brother. Deacon Ali Wooden, the deacon of GC. Sister Sean McNeil, listen, I'm excited about what the Lord is about to do on this morning. I am going to be featuring some friends and some brothers on this week. But listen, I want us to get started on this morning, if we will. And you know what time it is. I want you to invite, I want you to tag, and I want you to share. And here comes our morning song by my friend Michael J. Holloway, Jacksonville, Florida. I am a champion. Are y'all ready? Hit that share button, tag, and remember every person that you are tagging, you are touching their lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go. Listen, I need you to chime in this morning what state and city you are in. A champion, a champion. Oh, no matter what this life may throw at me, God has already planned out my destiny. Because my Bible tells me that I can do all things in Christ. Come on, you all that is on my personal page, I need you to hit that share button. You all that are on YouTube, I need you to share. You all that are on God Conversations Teaching Academy, I need you to share. And most definitely, those that are on God Conversations page, I know you are sharing. Baton, North Carolina, McDonough, Georgia. Jacksonville, Florida. You gotta buy this CD. You gotta buy this single. Michael J. Holloway, Jacksonville, Florida. Tyrone, Georgia. Diane Jenkins Johnson. Wahiba Brown, Dover, New Jersey. On my personal page, Sister Hazel Tyler. Good morning, sis. Listen, on this morning, I'm excited at what the Lord is doing, and I just thank the Lord for another day in the land of the living, and once again, tell you the significance behind this brother this is my brother Jeremy Wright and I thank God for him when I lost my father he showed that he was a brother strong when I really needed someone there and I will never forget that time that the Lord used him to comfort me during that time and I hope Jeremy is on here this morning so listen I'm going to play a little clip by Jeremy Wright and then I'm going to come back and tell you where you all can purchase his material are y'all ready good morning my Baptist apostle is on here the great Reverend Vincent Rouse Sr. Good morning. New Jersey is here. And my friend, one of my preaching friends, the lovely Reverend Natasha Rouse. Listen, can't wait to get back up there and fellowship with you guys. Pastor Rouse, I need you to go to brotherstrong.com. You got a lot of brothers up there in Pleasant Grove, up there in Newark. Tell the mayor Barack, tell him I need him to get this shirt for my brother Jeremy Wright. And I'm about to play what this Brother Strong is all about. Y'all ready? Here we go.
Brother Strong is a movement designed exclusively for the uplifting and empowerment of black men. To galvanize us while celebrating our strengths, Brother Strong is built on the fundamental ideals of self, family, community. Brother Strong provides personal proclamation, individual responsibility, and collective accountability. I am, you are, we are Brother Strong. So listen, on this morning, I want my brothers that's on here, I want you to go to brotherstrong.com and my sisters, and you can purchase this shirt. Jeremy Wright is also the founder of the One Walk um, event that takes place um, every year, and usually every year in Fayetteville, North Carolina, which attracts at least 25 to 40, I believe 25, I think he broke a record of maybe 40,000 people. So this is my brother over 20 plus years and he has done a phenomenal job and we just thank God for him on this morning and so this morning I am wearing Brother Strong this is Brother Strong on this morning so I know y'all used to seeing me and some other stuff this morning but I'm representing my brother this morning Brother Strong and I gotta represent him cause my t-shirt I live to love you and fight for you daily my other t-shirt is coming out right God wrong house right God wrong man right God wrong car <laughs> So listen, all this morning to my friend, Brother Jeremy Wright, I want you all to go once again, if you will. And listen, I promise you, it's not going to break the bank, all right? You can go once again to brotherstrong.com. Reginald Darnick, listen, go on there, brother. You a truck driver. Tell your truck, your truck driver brothers, get this shirt, and we're going to be representing some more brothers on this week, and I'm excited. So listen, let's support one another. It's better when we do it together. Are you all ready for this God Conversations on this morning? If you are ready, I want you to hit that share button. I want to give a shout out real quick before we get started. I'm going to be joining this woman of God, Navia Denise um, Brinson. Um, she's in Atlanta, Georgia now, former member of Legacy Church of Savannah. And I am going to be her special guest the last Monday in this month. I believe at around 7 p.m. somewhere around there. So I want you all to pray and I hope the, hopefully you all will be able to tune in and hear what the Lord is going to say. Are you all ready? Let's pray on this morning. Father, give us what we need for this assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. Release your predestined power, which causes men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners to be transformed to the very image of your son, Jesus Christ. And when you do these things, we should give your name all the glory and all the honor. And it is so in Jesus' name. And someone said, Amen. Once again, Brother Strong. Listen, on this week, Elder Di, this is our assignment. And I just want to say to Elder Di and to Brother Reginald, who lost his mother, and to Sister Diane and Brother Ali, who lost their sister, I want to say to you all, thank you for allowing me to give encouraging words to your family at such a time as this and the Lord gave us a word hurt and love and so we will have to talk about that later but I just want to say thank you for entrusting me with your family thank you for entrusting that I would have the right words at the right time to say and so guess what that's another way that brothers can be strong and sisters can be strong for one another and I want you to know that I live to love you and I fight for you all daily and if you know me, then you know that I love you. On this week, this is our assignment. The uncomfortable transformation. The uncomfortable transformation. Are y'all ready to get started? Navia Brinson, I think this is going to bless you. When I heard this, the uncomfortable transformation in our scripture for this week, it will be coming from Romans, the 12th chapter, commencing at the first verse, added including number two. Listen. On this morning, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. The uncomfortable transformation, hashtag mindset change, mind 
mindset change. I want us to think about this for a moment, the uncomfortable transformation. While you're sitting in your home and you're riding in your car, I want you all to be safe while you're listening. And let's just think about something this morning. When we consider an uncomfortable transformation, there are some things that we just have to really slow down and we have to address. And the number one thing that I believe we need to address as we get started this week, we have to address our mindsets. And on tomorrow is my birthday, so keep that in mind. So I want you to understand that we all have to really address our mindset. Many of us, um, we have become comfortable. Mindsets can make you complacent. Mindsets can make you aggressive. Mindsets can make you depressed. Mindsets can make you excited. They can make you overwhelmed. They can bring anxiety. But I believe all of us on this morning as believers, I think we all have to address our mindset. And so as we land this foundation on this Monday morning, I promise you it's going to get better in a moment, but this, let's just talk for a moment. When we think about mindsets, we have to ask who was the first teacher of our mindset? I remember, I remember growing up in North Carolina and there was a word that I would hear people use wrongfully and they would say hearsay. And so in my mind, I thought Elder Die, when I heard the word hearsay, it was about people talking. I thought it was about busybodies, people gossiping, but that's not what the word meant. And as I grew and I learned, I found out that that word actually was pronounced heresy, which meant the teaching of a false doctrine. So Brother Reginald, it's interesting on this morning, you have to even, watch this, you have to research even what people teach you so you will know for yourself that you have the right interpretation of what you are hearing and what you are reading. The Bible says, study thyself, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that not be needed to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of God, the word of truth. And so all of us, when we look at our lives, we must take inventory who taught or who influenced or who implemented this mindset that we have. Some of us have mindsets that, you know, um, it's okay to be rude to people. And then others have mindsets like, if I'm rude to somebody, I think I need to go apologize. I think I need to say I'm sorry. But then there are some people who do not feel that way at all. And so sometimes they will find themselves in the midst of a situation. They will find themselves saying, well, you know something? I don't think that applies to me. I don't think that I want to do this. I don't think I want to apologize. But let me tell you, that is a mindset and that does not come from the father we all we're going to get to this watch this jamie it's going to get better in a moment all of us have a mindset some of us think when we go out to dinner ain't i'm not trying to be funny some of us think well you know something i'm gonna go out to eat and i'm gonna order 12 chicken wings with ranch sauce um with some fries and a coca-cola or a sprite um but i'm gonna eat a salad yeah Okay, so you got 12 chicken wings, and then you got a big basket of fries, then you got a Coke, and one Coke cuts your immune system, okay, in half, but then you say, well, I'm also going to eat a Caesar salad. But the salad is the smallest portion on your entire table, okay. So that's a mindset that people have developed that makes, that it kind of makes them feel better if they're eating 12 and they're eating 12 chicken wings or more or a whole pizza but they got a salad and then I'm going to drink a bottle of water. So you're going to drink a bottle of water after you've eaten 20 wings, crab legs, shrimp, garlic, butter. I know y'all don't want to hear this, but it's, it's early. So let's go here. So you're going to eat all this stuff. And then you're going to say, but I, I, I drink water and I had a Caesar salad. That's a mindset. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. That salad ain't doing nothing but holding up the growth of them wings. Listen, Tiffany, did you hear what I said? That salad is doing nothing but holding up the growth and the purpose and the assignment of those chicken wings. 
Y'all cannot tell me that if I go somewhere and order a 12-piece of garlic parmesan chicken wings and a big basket of onion rings and a Charlotte Temple, watch this, then I order a Caesar salad, I'm eating healthy. No, I'm not. That's a mindset. I know the saints mad, but it's true. I, I want you to understand on this morning that all of us as believers, we have been taught some things that have become custom to us. And when people start challenging our customs, good to see you, Mia Foster, watch this. It becomes very uncomfortable for us. We got to talk about it. It becomes very uncomfortable for us. Some of you are watching me on this morning. There are some areas in your life that people who love you are trying to challenge you. And you don't realize that when you become uncomfortable, that's when true transformation can begin. Watch this. Let, I'm about to flip it in a minute. You are never going to be transformed if you remain consistent in your customs there are, there will have to be there must be some type of uncomfortability that you must embrace if you are going to change there's no use of you praying saying lord i want to be a good wife lord i want to be a good husband and you know you're going to be in the church you know you're a leader but you don't like people you are not nice to people you do not reciprocate the same love and the same um attention that people give to you that's not going to work you are going to have to become uncomfortable in order to secure covenant I said all that to say that watch this you are going to have to learn how to become uncomfortable so that you can secure covenant pastor what are you saying I want you to hear this I want you to hear this on this morning I want you to hear this when we look at this epistle that Paul writes to the Roman church he writes this to the Roman church church i i enjoyed this i enjoyed um this when we were in seminary because we had to study romans one and two and so i had to remember all this stuff about the gospel and i had to remember all this stuff about the roman um romans paul's teaching and so what i did i went and got these big pieces of paper and i said jamie i need you to write all this stuff down from romans and I put it all over my wall and put it all around the house. So every time I woke up, I was looking and I was studying Paul's epistle. I learned that from my brother Nate when he was studying, I believe, years ago to pass the post office um, test. And so he just put up all the zip codes and all this stuff in the room. And so every time he woke up, he had a visual of what he was trying to achieve. I'm trying to help somebody study. So anytime you are trying to study for something and you need to retain that information, keep that information before you Paul says watch this to the church he says I beseech you therefore brethren not sinners not strangers I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God now I need to stop there for a moment because there's an observation that we need to really pay very close attention to in the text. When he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, there's an invocation to them. There's an invite into this dialogue. And then there is a petition and a plea. And he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living now i need to stop there for a moment because if he is saying to the church that you need to present your body a living sacrifice then apparently there are some people in the church who are not presenting their bodies all right let's 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 this is god conversations with students in the word become strategic in the kingdom assignment so let's go here on this morning let's consider this on this morning he says to the church of Christ, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Now, the first thing he says to them is your body and no one can present your body before the Lord except you. Do you hear it on this morning? No one can present your body to the Lord except you. I was thinking about this last night. And if you think about it, no one can give an account for you except yourself. Okay. 
No one can eat your food for you unless you eat it, you swallow it, unless you need assistance. You have to make a conscious decision to do some things for yourself. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. He says, so I'm, he said, I'm beseeching you, brethren, that you present your body. So he's not just talking to one person. He said your bodies, he's speaking to a collective group of people that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Wait a minute. If it is a living sacrifice, that says to us there's a clear indication that this is not going to happen today. This is going to be a continuous process. And I think one of the problems that we have in the church, we don't, we don't, implement the same amount of grace to the hearer that we um that we receive watch this as the messenger so sometimes we preach messages that are very harsh they are dogmatic they are they condemn and even though they need to convict a message of conviction should never usher in the spirit of condemnation let me say it again the word of the Lord, the spirit, the word of God, it, when preach, it should never just convict. If it convicts, it should never make you feel condemned. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. So if you are hearing someone preach and you are feeling condemned, that is a clear indication. Watch this, that that word that you are hearing, it is not coming from a vessel who is preaching to you in love. Because even though you are rebuked, even though you are corrected, even though you are a, you are corrected and you are rebuked and all those different things and you are convicted you should still be able to feel the love of Jesus Christ in that message my professor told me he said whatever you do whether it's rebuke or exaltation the love of Jesus Christ should always be shown and felt by the receiver I'm trying to help somebody this morning so if you are listening to someone preach and you are feeling more condemned and convicted, then that message is coming from a personal gender. It is not coming from the assignment of the blood. I said it first. I want you to hear this. He says, listen to what he says, Sean. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He did not say you all need to present your body because Jesus died for you. And if he wouldn't died for you, you would be in hell lifting up your eyes. No, he did not do that. Because this is the same man that said, I have to minister out of the amount of grace that has been given to me. And every preacher and every fivefold ministering gift, you have to always remain. Watch this. You got to always put yourself in remembrance that before you was preaching about salvation, you were the sinner in need of a savior. Okay. Can, can, can y'all hit that share button on this morning? Come on, come on. I, I just want somebody to hear this on this morning. Well, thank you, Janika Baldwin, for joining us for Late Church. Watch this. Here it is. I want you to catch this. Any preacher that's preaching, any woman that's preaching, any prophet, you have to remember that before you was the messenger, watch this, preaching about salvation, you were the sinner in need of a savior. And I love what one person said. They said, the sinner doesn't know they're lost until you show them in the gospel. Am I, am I doing all right? I know it's early in the morning. I, I hope I'm doing all right. Watch this. I hope I'm doing all right. Watch this. Here it is. So he says to them, he admonishes them. He does not rebuke them. Now, I'm not saying rebuke doesn't have its place. Oh, no. I believe, for, no, I believe in rebuke. I believe in rebuke. But I also believe that you can bring correction to a person or to someone without making them feel condemned. If you are preaching a message that causes someone to feel that they can no longer approach the altar as a sinner, you have missed your assignment. Oh, I just said something there. I don't ever want to preach a message that the sinner, the whoremonger, the homosexual, the lesbian, the adulterer, the liar, the cheater. 
I never want to preach a message that they no longer feel like they can come to the altar. That's what the altar is for to consume what is stinking in your life. What is offensive? Y'all ain't going to go with me this morning. Y'all better hear it. I, Shannon Ray, I don't ever want to preach a message that after I get through preaching what the Lord said, there's someone who was sitting in the pew that feels so condemned that now con condemnation has watched this cause conviction to become subject to it. No, no, no. That that should not happen. That 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 should not happen. Uh-uh. That, that should not happen. Are, are y'all hearing me this morning? Watch this. I, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Watch this. Watch this. Understand this on this morning. When we are preaching, we have to be in a place that we can receive, watch this, the spirit of conviction that comes to preaching the word of Christ, but not, watch this, but not shut down on it and say, you know something, um, I, don't, I don't think that's for me. I don't think that's for me that, that I, I don't I don't think that's for me. No, sometimes things are for you. They are just not comfortable. And that's what I want to deal with this morning. They are not comfortable. Now, how many people are here watching me this morning? You know that you are anointed. You know that God has blessed you. You know, he has kept you, but you know that there are still some areas in your life that you need kingdom conformability. You need Christ conformability. Come on, let, let, let's, let's just keep it real this morning. Let, let's, let's just talk this morning. You, you know every now and then you may slip up with your language. You may slip up with not treating someone right. You may do something that you have to go back to God and say, listen, I, I know I was in error in doing this. But how many of us on this morning can say, but I am the person that I still believe the Lord is teaching how to be conformed, you're going to catch it, into the very image of his son Jesus. Watch this. Our prayer minister, Cedric Thornton, is watch this. Father, give us what we need for this assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. Release your predestined power, which causes men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners, to be transformed to what? The very image of your son, Jesus Christ. I know we say it fast sometimes, but I want you to hear it. That's why I pray that prayer. Because there's always a son, there's always a daughter, there's a man, there's a woman, there's a saint, there's a sinner. That still needs to be transformed into the very image of the son of Jesus Christ. Why are we saying that? Because the Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it do not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That means that there's still some transformation and kingdom conformability that we have to reach. We have to acclimate to on this morning. Are y'all hearing me this morning? He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Watch this. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. I, I, want, I want you to hear this on this morning. Let's have this conversation. Has our mindset, which we have received as our customs, hindered us from experiencing kingdom and manifold blessings. I said to Tiffany last night, I said, sometimes when we are trying to get people to change their mindset, it's almost like taking an apostolic or kojic mother who or, or Baptist mother who, who's been in the church all their life and, you know, they wore long dresses and they covered themselves and they were taught to wear modest apparel. That's almost like telling that mother, watch this, mother, it's okay for you to go to um, the, the, the beach with a two-piece on. Go ahead and show it. You got a good shape. The mother would probably, people would try to say, Jesus is okay with that. This is a new generation and, and people understand you got to be free. The mother would probably say, even if Jesus don't have a problem with it, I have a problem with it because it is my custom and I was not raised like that. I, I want y'all to hear this on this morning. I hope I'm helping somebody. I'm almost there. Watch this. I want you to hear this on this morning. There are many times in life 
that when we begin to challenge our mindset and our customs, we become convicted and we become angry. Okay. Okay. What, 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 are you, what are you saying? We become angry because sometimes we don't like being challenged in areas and customs that have given us security or what we think is security. Okay. Um, there are some women who think because I'm attractive, I can get any man that I want. Well, that same woman who thought that at 21 no longer thinks that at 31. Okay? Um, th there are times where that man who thought he could get any woman at 21, by the time he turns 31, he realized that's not the truth. But there are people who every time they get dressed, every time they put their makeup on, they see their custom but not their reality. Okay, this, this, this is going to help somebody this morning. This is going to help somebody. All right, watch this. All right, Sh Shannon Ray said, I still believe he's teaching me. T Shannon, I believe he's teaching me too, daughter. Stay, stay with me. It's going to get better in a minute. Watch this. Sometimes people are so in love with their reflection that they cannot behold their reality. Okay, okay, let, can, let, let's talk about reflection versus reality, okay? Regina Miles, let, let's talk about this for a moment. I, I love to go back to the, the story when it says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And the mirror has to tell the truth that even though you are looking at your reflection and you want this response that will confirm a false reality, it is not going to happen. Every woman don't want every man. Every man don't want every woman. Okay? And you can never think that just because of how you feel about yourself that someone else is going to feel that way about you. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Because I think that's where we mess up. And what we try to do is we spend years trying to attract a response and we don't even know how to attract kingdom reinforcement <laughs> or the reality that suits you i'm trying to help somebody this morning no because sometimes you have a reflection of yourself but it is not a rea it's not it's a false reality that's not how people see you when you put on this and you put on that Come on. Anybody ever had a wardrobe malfunction? Okay, come on. Let, let, let's just keep it real. Anybody ever had on here, has anyone on this live ever had a wardrobe function where you put something on and then later you looked at it and you realized you look real crazy and, or someone told you that don't look good on you. But, but you, you so used to doing it that you think is okay. Okay, so so let me say this. All right. Should I be shady this morning? Um, I'm not going to be shady. I'm just going to be, um, I'm just going to make some observations. Um, <laughs> well, I would just make some observations. It's Monday. We keep it light on Monday. So, 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 okay. So y'all have had some wardrobe malfunctions. All right. All right. It doesn't feel good when you spend time in the mirror, man or woman, and you put on something. And after you put it on and you, you, you know, you, you, you look at yourself and be like, mm, this, 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 this look good right here. And then you don't get the response from people that you thought you was going to get. You know, when you walk in their presence, they, they pull on it and be like, honey, you, you could have got that a, um, just maybe five sizes bigger. Five sizes bigger. Um, <laughs> okay, you, you could have you spent a little bit more time get, getting that hair right. Okay. Um, I, all right. I, 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 I know you're casual, 
but you, you a young lady and you know you shouldn't tuck your shirt in and your belt the, the your buckle is twisted to the side and it look like your zipper half open and you look like you got a beer belly mm, 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 you, you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that me, me, me and we sh we shouldn't wear coats that's so tight that we can see our love handles every time we say praise the Lord. Jeremy Wright said you got to plant it before you put it on. That, that's it. Jeremy, what you say? Because once you walk in the door, it's over with. <laughs> that's a rule of thumb. You got to make sure that white shirt is crisp because once you walk in, it's done. I'm, I'm just trying to help some of y'all. Some of y'all on here, I ain't going to call no names. When you get dressed, if you put on jeans and a belt and it look like you are doing a 20-year anniversary commercial for Budweiser, listen, your belly is too big for them pants. Somebody say, Brother Stroll. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm just, so I, look, I want y'all to be, I want every, so when you, when you about to walk out the house now, I want you to look in the mirror and if it looks like you have a balloon in front of you. Then you have on the wrong pants and the wrong belt. And you got to get some jeans. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. J J Jeremy, I'm just trying to help somebody. You know, we, we, we all have to learn some stuff about fashion, okay? Brothers, when you get a suit, that, that, that little tag on there that says 100 wool, take that off. That is not a label that you keep on. Brothers, you don't wear brown shoes with a black belt. You don't, wear, you don't wear black belt with brown shoes. Come on, ladies. I'm trying to help y'all. Ladies, you don't put on lipstick and don't put the line around it. Y'all ain't talking to me. And please don't put on no fake eyelashes that look like you've been sleeping in them for two weeks and now they black and stuck together like you use Godzilla glue. You the devil. God can't use you like that. <laughs> don't you do it. And, and let, let me tell y'all something, because let, let me get on some of y'all, because I know y'all ain't going to like this. It's Monday, so we're going to go here. We're going to keep it light. Don't come wearing all this stuff that you see in these magazines with these models that's 6 and 8, and you know you are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't do that. You go to Lane Bryant. You go to, um, go, go, go to the big girl stores and get you some clothes that fit you. And brothers, if you thick, it ain't no use of you trying to put on those skinny jeans. You go on over there to that big and tall section and get that spandex, that stretch. Okay? And if your clothes, and if that belly is sticking out, until you lose weight, go buy you a spank. Go get you a girdle and say, I'm going to fake it till I make it. Ain't nobody going to know you got on no spank. <laughs> Steve. I've been working out. I bought me a spank. I said, well, I'm in the gym, Jeremy, so until I get back like I want to get, I'm going to fake it till I make it. So y'all saints on here that come to church and you don't have on the right support, God can't use you like that. Go get you a spank. Go get you a gir girdle up. Come in there shaking everywhere. No. You're being conformed to the world. You look too worldly. Shabir, did you scream? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to help somebody. Y'all know folks come to church, and we looking like. Now, she knows she wrong. Why is that boy pants so tight in the pulpit? Brothers clothes tighter than women now. Okay. Gird up your loins with truth. Uh-uh, you just can't say gird up your loins, Tanya. You got to say gird up your loins with truth. I'm trying to help somebody here. That, see, and what happens is when someone pull you to the side, and they say, I, can, I, can I speak to you for a moment? And you're like, sure, sure. Um, can, can you handle this? Yeah, I can handle it. I think your outfit is really nice. Um, but I think it would have been nicer if you would have wore this outfit when you was in high school. Now, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, but no, for real. You, you, this is a nice outfit. And it looks, it looks nice. I see where you were going with this. That, look, that, that's how you have to go. Now, don't ask Nicole because Nicole run people away from the church because she don't know how to talk to folks about their outfits and their hygiene. So don't, don't let Nicole talk to you because she's going to run you away. Um, so watch this. You, 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 you got to have somebody that can speak to you and say, can I, can I just, 
can I just offer you this free consultation? <laughs> I think this outfit, um, it would be much better if you would do it like this. Okay, so watch this. So when you do that, you have to tell them, watch this. You got to give them a solution. You just can't leave them wounded, Nicole. You got minister crawling. You just can't. Watch this. You cannot, you cannot just leave them wounded like that. So what you have to do is you have to say, okay, here we are. And so you are dealing with this situation. You're dealing with this person and say, I just want to, I, I think this is a real nice outfit and I see where you were going. So I think maybe um, the next time you wear this outfit, maybe if you implement this, I think it'll work better for you. Now, if someone tells you that, you can't just go off on them and say, well, my man like it. Well, didn't nobody else tell me, everybody else said they like, they like my outfit. Well, th this is my thing, and I, and I love this saying right here. Watch this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Sometimes there are people, and I think, I think someone told me like this. For every one person that will tell you the truth, there are 10 people who will lie to you. So some people are not going to tell you that outfit didn't look good on you. Some people aren't going to tell you that. But you need some people in your life. And I know y'all like, why is he talking about this? Because I got to take it carnal first before I bring it spiritual. Because a lot of us, if we have problems receiving that our outfit doesn't look good then most definitely we're going to have a problem when people tell us that our fruit is sour and stinking. Watch this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this on this morning. So, so here it is. When you are dealing with customs and you are dealing with different things like that, you have to know how to, watch this. Look at this scripture right here. Let me show y'all this. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies what a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. The reason that I had to go this way, and I'm almost there, because I really believe that one of the challenges that we face in the church is that we have perfected being saints. Watch this. We've perfected being church members. We've perfected being praise and worship leaders. We've perfected being preachers. But have we perfected being believers and saints? Because if you're going to be a saint, if you are going to be a believer, there, there, there is a mandate. There is a mandated transformation that you must go through. And that's what Paul is trying to present to the people when he says, listen, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have to ask the question on this morning. How often do we allow our minds to be transformed? Or are we comfortable stuck in the same mindset? I'm not trying to be funny, but sometimes it's really like that where we really don't want to address it. But sometimes we are really stuck in that old mindset where, no, it has to be this way. It has to be that way. It has to be that way. And maybe there are some things that we need to change. So I believe what Paul was telling them, this is a mandated transformation. Y'all going to have to change some stuff because if you don't change some things about yourself, you are never going to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Can somebody type on here this morning? I still need transformation. Because when you go through transformation, you are going into, watch this, you, when you're going through, how can I say it? When you're going through transformation, he's moving you more into, watch this, the full expression of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand this on this morning. When you are dealing with transformation, you are being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we got to ask the question, how do we get our minds transformed? We must go into the word of God. Listen to what he says. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now listen to what he says, because this is what we struggle with in the church. And be not conformed to this world. Now we struggle with that because we feel like we have to use the methodologies of the world to reach the world. But the challenge in that is it is impossible to adopt the methodologies of the world and not accept the same spirit that they were birthed in. Okay, now I, I got to teach something here. So, so here we go. So Shamia, let me turn the corner. When you decide that you need to dress a certain way to win people, then you diminish the cross. Because the cross was not attached to a tire. Because his attire was ripped from him. Y'all better hear it. So, so if, if you feel like preacher, that you got to wear jeans, T-shirts, Air Force Ones, tight jeans in order to win somebody, then you are being conformed to the world and you're going to diminish this, this cross. Because clothes cannot save anyone. Y'all better hear me. Uh-uh, that is style. And the problem with that, some of us have been alive long enough that, listen, we done seen um, parachute pants come in style. Y'all remember those? Um, Y'all remember, um, let, me, let me name some stuff. Um, cross colors. Um, I'm going to go way back. Watch this. How many of y'all remember Jordash and Fidel Sassoon? I think that's how you say it. Y'all, that, that, that was your design. Your, uh-huh, y'all your, your, your remember that? Watch this. You remember that? Y'all remember Fidel Sassoon? Yeah. And then Jordash. We, we only have Jordash. Do they even have Jordash anymore? You know, people, everybody wanted Jordash. You know, that was the popular one right there. What, what's another one? Y'all help me out with some stuff. Um, let me see. Um, cabbage Patch Babies. Everybody wanted a Cabbage Patch Baby. Folks was fighting over Cabbage Patch Babies. Now you can you could probably put a thousand Cabbage Patch Babies out for free. And somebody might take 12. They wouldn't even want them. Because the world is always going to come up with something that keeps their momentum marketable. Watch this. Momentum marketable. And so if you keep trying to keep up with the world, you're going to always be miserable because the world is always going to change its momentum. Okay? Michael Jordan. Okay? They love Michael. After Michael was gone. Here come Allen Iverson. After Allen Iverson gone, here come Shaq. After Shaq, here come Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul. After Kobe, here come LeBron. I promise you, they are always going to create someone else to keep that momentum going. And that's why in the church, we don't try to keep up with the world. We are called to minister the gospel to the world. And I think that is one of the things that we are missing. We are trying to conform in order to convert. You can't conform and convert because then the person that you're ministering to, they are getting to know you on a personal level. They are not experiencing the true authenticity, authenticity of Christ being made flesh in their life. No man comes unto me unless he is drawn. So watch this on this morning. Watch this. We are almost there. I want you to understand this on this morning. So when he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least that you can do. Then he says, and be not conformed to this world. Because there is always something in the world that's going to try to get you to conform. You better hear it. You better hear it. It happened with Jesus when Jesus came up out of the water. And the Bible says in the spirit of God. And, and, and watch this. Watch this. Um, the three said not the gospel said he was led, he was driven, and he was carried away into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. And what did Satan start doing? Satan start trying to get Jesus. He started offering him stuff to get him to conform. Because if he would have conformed, watch this, he would have missed his assignment. So we have to ask ourselves sometimes how many assignments have we missed because of what we conform to. There's a Jewish terminology, and if you all can, just type it on here this morning. I want you to type forbidden mixture. I started teaching about this years ago, and I prophesied this probably over 10 or 12 years ago about the generation that we were coming into. Forbidden mixture. In the Jewish custom, it is forbidden that you mix oil with water. 
because it is symbolic that you are mixing spirituality with secularism. Okay, so I want you to hear something. So when Paul is saying to them, be not conformed to this world, he is actually saying, do not participate in forbidden mixture. Okay, uh, we, we can turn on YouTube clips now and we'll see people in the church doing all this stuff and popping and going down to the floor and doing all this stuff and tapping their head. And I'm sitting like, okay, okay. And they say, that's just those young people expressing themselves. Well, let me give you all a history lesson in dancing. When I was in seminary, I did my first paper on a forced religion that brought forth a great change. And basically, it centered around the first church of America, the black invisible church. And so what happened is when the slaves came over and they were indoctrinated with the gospel of Jesus Christ, as history says, as if the gospel was not in Africa, fast forward. Okay, um, they say that the slaves, they didn't feel were intelligent enough to be baptized, but they taught them scriptures like slaves obey your masters for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But since the slaves could not read, they did not proceed in the text or go any further into the text where it says, but if your slave be converted and treat him as your brother, they didn't read that part. Okay. So then they felt like, well, we don't need to baptize these people because of how they are dancing and how they are acting. What, what do you mean? They're just praising God. No, they were not praising God because what the slaves were doing, the dances that they were doing, watch this, L.A. Spears, what the slaves were doing and the masters knew it, they were doing incantations and their dances were invoking spirits from the motherland. Okay, so if you've ever seen an African movie or movies when people are trying to um, do a seance, they start, and they start, and they start rolling, they start rolling, because what they're doing is they're trying to, they're trying, what, what is the word, they're trying to be a medium for that spirit to come over into the atmosphere, so they're calling on this and they're calling on this. And, and y'all may say, well, that sounds crazy. No, because do you remember in the Bible when the prophet went up against the prophets of Baal and he said, okay, well, you call your God and I'm going to call my God and whichever one answers by fire, that's who we are going to serve. Do you remember that? And the Bible says that the prophet said, well, your God must be sleep. Because what happens is you have to be careful when people adopt methodologies from the world. And we bring them into, I know we don't use this word. I'm going to get in trouble, Sabrina. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, we're going to get in trouble because I know we didn't turn the church into movie theaters and, you know, stages. But I thought the church of God, I thought it was a consecrated and hallowed place where it is dedicated to the presence of the Lord. So if it is dedicated to the presence of the Lord, we have to be careful what we allow to function in the house. Okay. I know nobody want to hear that, but it's the truth that, that still has to be. I'm not saying that we cannot be relatable, but we don't need to be so relatable to the world that we become a reproach on our own standards. No, no, uh, -uh no, 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 no. We, we, we don't need to. I remember Bishop Iona Lot preached this years ago at the full Baptist gospel convention years ago. And she said, we got to be very careful when we are setting up studio, when we setting up discos and we setting up atmospheres for young people to go in and we put strobe lights and we turn off the lights and we say, it's okay, it's okay to dance. And we're going to put on some music with a funkadelic bass line. She said, that's not gospel. She said, that's perversion because you are bringing another spirit into the church. Now we got people leading praise and worship with Bob Marley t-shirts on. We got musician pits smelling like, but like, like pure ganja, just straight up weed. Y'all ain't going to go with me, but I'm telling the truth. And what she preached then, we didn't want to hear because we're saying we're trying to win the young people. If the gospel can't win them, then we can't win them. Listen, if the gospel can't win someone then you don't create something else to keep them and make them a part of the church. Okay. Okay. I, I, I got to say, if the gospel doesn't do it, if the preaching of the gospel, if the anointing, if prayer is, is, isn't enough, 
He hasn't given us another methodology outside of love, outside of preaching the gospel, outside of prayer and fasting and teaching. No, we don't create another methodology. If the gospel can't reach them, then you don't create something else. Yael, what you doing up this early? Watch this. I want you to hear something on this morning. If the gospel is not enough, you don't create something else. Well, you know something? Maybe we, maybe we need to have a party. Um, maybe may we need to do. No, that's activities. But that's not anointing. What young people and what this generation still need to hear, Jesus saves. I'm sorry. They still need to hear Jesus saves. They still need to hear that after this life, it does not end here according to what we believe. They still need to hear it. And if the gospel is not enough, we do not have permission to create anything else to win them. Okay. We feed the hungry because that's the great conviction. That's the great commission. But that is an act of charity. But it is still up to the person who's receiving the food to give the Lord a yes. Come, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying, because I know we create stuff and people put everything that they do on social media. Oh, we going to feed the homeless. Okay, well, they got to eat all year. You're going to feed them 365 days of the year? So, so everything you do for somebody, you got to put it on social media. You got to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Well, according to the Bible, you already got your reward. You don't, people don't have to see everything that you are doing if you are really doing it for the right reason. Come on now, because you got to understand when you are feeding the hungry, you still need to give them some type of respect. Because I don't think they want everyone in the world to know they homeless, even though they need your help. What we do, we go into places and go feed people and we got our cell phones up. Yeah, I'm, I'm out here at the homeless camp. I'm out here at the tent city. No, you Can't you be discreet? Even Jesus told a man, Zacchaeus, let me come in your house and talk to you. He sat at the well and talked to the prostitute. Talk to the adulterous woman. Why can't you give them the same respect? People, we don't need to see everything that God is doing in your life. If you are doing it in the right reason, in the right spirit. I mean, if I was homeless, I wouldn't want nobody coming up and talking about, yeah, here's a homeless man right here, and we feeding him today. Brother, um, did you want something to eat? Yeah, I sure was hungry. No, give them some respect. Turn the cameras off and feed the people. And allow the Lord to open up an avenue. I think it's, I think it's something Nicole said. She said, you know, we have got, we've reached a place in the church now that there's no intimacy, that there's nothing sacred about our worship. Everything is like this. Ooh, look at her praising God. Ooh, look at them getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Ooh, look at them falling out. Ooh, look at them getting the devil cast out of them. No, that, that we still need some type of respect and we still need some type of intimacy in this ecclesia. Okay, watch this. I'm almost there. When he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How, all of us on here this morning, I'm closing early, I promise you. All of us on this morning have to identify that all of us need a mindset. Even in scripture, the Bible says in Hosea, he said, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And because they have rejected, watch this, my wisdom, I'm going to also reject them in their seed. There are some times that we do not move into the harvest of the Lord and the wealth of the Lord because we possess the same mindset. I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm going to say it. I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny. Tiffany, you know I'm going to say it right. She said, yeah, I know, I know you're going to say it. I'm going to say it. We, 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 it's sad that if we really look at ministry, there are people who will spend thirty and forty thousand dollars on a car that they're not going to drive anywhere, but to maybe a hundred mile radius. But that same person, if you would challenge them to do something beyond their norm, beyond their custom, it would offend them. Watch this. I want to. I want to see something on this morning. How many of you all on here have ever sold? A $500 seed or a $1,000 seed. If you've ever done it, I want you, and if you have not done it, I want you to say it. If you're on this live this morning, you say, Pastor, I've never sold $1,000 in my life in church. I want you to put it on here. I want you to I want you to type it real quick. And if you have, I want you to put yes. And if you haven't, I want you to put no. I want, I want to teach y'all something real quick. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to give $1,000 this morning, so don't get nervous. All right. 
Tanya says, I have. Shannon Ray says, I, I have. I want to show y'all something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show y'all something this morning. Natasha Nova says, yes. Sister Sean McNeil said, no. Okay? Watch this. Wahiba, yes. Wahiba, I know you have. Banika Sterler said, yes. I remember one time, Banika called me. And she said, the Lord said, there's a certain amount of money you need. And I was a pastor and I didn't want to tell her. So the Lord gave her the number. And she said, the Lord told me to give you this money. She said, because you're not going to say that you need it. But this is the number that you need. And I, I appreciate that. Okay, Brother Stevenson said no. Mia Foster said no. Shamia Garfield said no. Okay, I'm going to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. Bridget Green said no. All right. I, I want to show y'all something. I have never been on a vacation that did not cost me at least one thousand to twenty five hundred just for the trip and the flight. When you get into food, especially if it's not inc all inclusive, you spend at least I know I spend at least two hundred dollars a day on food. Oh, it's easy to do. Go to New Jersey, go to Top's Diner. Breakfast is gonna be about thirty four. $35, $40, leave a tip, that's $50. Okay, if you go to lunch somewhere, if you want to go to like a cheesecake factory, you want to go in New York, that bill is going to be between $60 and $120. Okay, then you got to pay for the Holland Tunnel, you got to pay for the Turnpike, you got to pay for the Parkway. Okay, so that's tolls right there. So you already in one day, you already at over $200 some dollars. Now, parking, you can't park in New York unless you pay at least an hour or two, five hours. So just for an hour of parking in New York, that's $25, one hour even if you stay 30 minutes, non-negotiable. So if you stay the whole night, it's between 38 and 48 and $50. I'm trying to help somebody. So I want, I want, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want every believer on here, every person who said, I want to be a business owner. This is what I want the Lord to do in my life. You got to allow your seed to match where you want to behold. Watch this. Where you want God to become seated in your life. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are a lot of preachers that preach to you about prosperity, but they cheap. And I'm going to say this, and they lie. Because they preach something that they don't live. Okay. They, 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 they preach it. But when it comes to really, really making that sacrifice... They're not going to do it because it's not in their custom to do it. It convicts me. My father used to always say, he said, you know, it amazes me how people can speak in tongues and buy cars and wear nice clothes. He said, but they won't buy a man on the street a hot dog. And I used to laugh at my daddy when I was younger. I was like, my daddy is crazy. <laughs> Until I got older and I saw the same people who was driving the fancy cars. They would scream at the homeless people and tell them to get away from their car. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about musicians, I'm talking about pastors. But it was a woman that was on drugs on Orton Parkway in New Jersey. East Orange, New Jersey. And she walked up to me and she said, can you give me some money, sir? I said, what you need money for? She said, I, I just need to get something for myself. I said, okay. And she said, the Bible says, he that give it to the poor lend it to the Lord. I had never heard that scripture all my days in church. What I heard was Malachi, will a man rob God? And you say, wherein we robbed you and we say in tithes and offerings. Bring all them tithes into the storehouse they've been me. That's the only I heard. And so you won't be cursed. And so people gave tithes and offerings out of fear, not faith. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. I want you to hear it on this morning. You don't want to sow out of fear, Shemia. You want to sow because you believe God going to be faithful. And when my father died, there was a woman that came looking for my father. Who was a woman who was on the street. And she said, do you know a man named Reverend Purcell? She asked someone and said, yeah. And they said, but he passed. She said, that man always told me when he saw me when I was drunk and I was stinking. I was in my urine. He said, that man always said, daughter, I love you and so does God love you. See, sometimes we so stuck in our customs that we want people to see our suits and we want people to see our car. When the last time you did that for somebody else? Because Jesus was all about duplication. He said, if you believe in the works that I've done, you should do them and also greater. You better hear it. You better hear it. You don't want to sow out of fear. 
you want to sow out of faith. Every person on this live, I can go through every person on here. When I met Janika, I prophesied it to Janika. I said, Janika, there's a, there's a certain figure that the Lord keeps showing me about you. And I think less than a year or a year and a half, the Lord had given her three raises. Sister Natasha's on here. The Lord doubled her finance. Sister Tanya, the company that she works for, she's not even a boss, but she makes more than her boss. Sister Tiffany has matriculated. Nicole, I watched Nicole go from um, just going, just trying to 12 hours a week, just trying to make it to now she, she has to schedule out her time because now she's a professor and a social worker. I watched Jamie go from being on the bus to now driving a 2019 new car and not complaining about certain things. Why? Because you need somebody to teach you that if you sow it, you'll see it. Can somebody type on this morning? If you sow it, you will see it. What the Lord gave me on last week. He said, people that sow, they expect to see me seated in their life. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shannon Ray, I looked at Shannon. People don't notice Shannon. But about a year ago, this ministry, we sent Shannon something. I said, Shannon, go pay your tuition. And she finished school. She opened business and she did this. Now Shannon is posing with a beautiful black Mercedes truck. Just did her photo shoot. About to release her first book. Why? Because if you sow it, you'll see it. Y'all not hearing me. If you sow it, you'll see it. Let, let, it don't matter if you... No, 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 no. No, if you sow it, you'll see it. That's the law of reciprocity. If you sow it, you'll see it. You all that have not sold $1,000 in your life. I'm going to challenge you, not today, but I'm going to challenge you. We are doing something called the shifting of the season. And there are already people on here who are committed. They're saying, listen, I am, I am excited about sowing this thousand dollar seed at the end of May. There are different people saying, I'm going to sow this, I'm going to sow it. And I know they're going to do it because the Lord said, do it. If you've never sold that, and listen, I'm listen, I'm just telling you the truth. I want you, especially Samia Garfield, because I know what the Lord's gonna do in your life. I ain't gonna call the other folks' names on here, but you all that have never done it, I want you to make a vow. I want you to reach out to sensitivity and say, and matter of fact, on here say, I'm gonna sow a thousand dollars at the end of May, first of June. I want you to sow it. I want you to sow that seed. I promise you you can do it. I'm, and sometimes when we hear a number, we say, oh my God, $1,000 is a lot of money. Have you ever added up four car payments? Okay, so let, let's do, let's watch this. Tiffany, let's do some math real quick. Average car payment in the United States, $350 times 12 months. That's $4,200 right there. Okay? That, that's, that, they ain't even talking about the insurance, not talking about the gas, the upkeep, and different things like that. We have to, we have to stop being fearful of numbers. I, I don't want to drive an expensive car with a cheap suit. I just, I just don't want to do that. No, no. I want to make sure that what I'm doing, there is an alignment. I applaud ladies that say, no, I want this. I remember when I had two suits, a black and a purple suit. Now I love to bless people with suits. And now I just take clothes and I say, there may be a man that needs to get a job. And so I put, new, I put new suits in there. This is a, a diet. I put Hugo Boss shirts and I put um, Gianni Ferry in and I put different shoes, Cole Hans in and different things because that, you never know what man going to walk into Goodwill and he need a good wardrobe because God is going to do something awesome in his life. Watch this. So on this morning, I'm not taking up a seed this morning. I'm not, I'm not taking up anything this morning. I want to teach this morning. We're going to labor out this week. I know my birthday is tomorrow and I'm excited. But listen, you all that are watching, if you've never sold that seed, I'm going to only do this for two minutes. You cannot expect for God to open up the windows if you will not open up your hand. I'm excited at the end of May. I am. Because I'm not going to sow into my ministry. I'm going to sow into somebody. So I, cause I told somebody, I need to feel this seed leave me. So I am going to sow this seed into someone on this live because I want people to see that this pastor don't preach something that he does not do a thousand dollars is nothing to, 
a thousand dollars is nothing come on y'all y'all know i'm telling the truth in this generation a thousand dollars is not a lot of money it's people on here that got red bottoms and and balenciagas and all this type of stuff them shoes 800 to 1200 dollars and all this stuff and people say why you gotta get that because if that's what they if that's what they work for to let them have it if that's what they want let them buy it. you're only gonna get one time to wear it the lord give you one time to do it all right so watch this let's see on this morning if we can get some people who've been listening to the word to respond to it. Roosevelt said, you are a, pro a true prophet. God has released half of what you said we will receive. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Roosevelt, when did the Lord do it? I told Roosevelt last week, the Lord said there was $300,000 that he needed. He said, you are a true prophet. God has released half of what you said we would receive. I praise God for this connection. See, everybody ain't gonna believe I'm a true prophet just because I don't have no hair. But Roosevelt, walk in it, doc. And I'm coming to eat. I promise you, I'm coming to eat. So listen, this is what I need. I want some people on here, Brother Roosevelt, so I know you and your brother. I know it ain't going to be no problem. <laughs> I want some people to say, Pastor, at the end of May, I'm going to sow, if I've never done it, I'm going to sow my first $1,000. If that's you, I, want you to I just want you to type me. Watch this. He said, March is a bad month for me. All right. Bart Bailey, I'm going to, I'm going to, we just brother reginald just lost his his mother too and so we're gonna reach out to you all right watch this we perceive prophet amen thank you elder Di. this morning so it happened this morning brother roosevelt well man listen can everybody on here say to god be the glory doc i'm like sister tiffany we want everybody to win we want everybody to win so listen on here this morning in two minutes if you are going to listen if you're going to expand and let the Lord stretch you. I want you to type on here this morning. Listen, I'm going to sow this seed. Okay? I want you to sow the seed on this morning. Not this morning, but at the end of May. I want you to sow it. So how many? Can we get some people on here? Brother Steve Richardson said me. Okay, that's a thousand. And Brother Steve, let me tell you, you're not by yourself. There's some other folks on here. They already, I'm telling you, they already ready to sow. This is the shifting of the season. Elder Dye, we about to see God's, we about to see manifestation. We're about to see it. I'm happy for Brother Roosevelt. And there's some other folks on here that named some salaries that they needed. All right. So listen, on this morning, how many of y'all, Sister Tiffany, says she's sewing hers? I know Sister Tiffany's sewing hers because whatever we do, we got to do it. Brother Clifton. All right, Brother Clifton. All right. Sister Tiffany, you, listen, I, Tiffany, write these names down. Um, Brother Roosevelt said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sow that seed. All right. I promise you on this live right now, we can probably get at least $10,000. And may we already over, we already at ten thousand before we started. The goal is fifty, but I promise you we're gonna get it. We pro come on. So on this morning we already have um, brother Steve, we have brother sister Tiffany Clifton, brother Roosevelt, sister Natasha. Who else on here? All right, sister D Elder Di. I need you to put me on here. All this decree and declare manifestation. I need you to say me prophet, me prophet, with my gray Afrocentric hair. I want you. Come on, come on, come on. Go with me. Go with me. All right, we almost there. This, this is a goal, this is something that the Lord told me to do. And I've never asked for this seed online before, but this is something that the Lord told me to do, so I'm going to be obedient. He said, the end of May, challenge the people to sow a $1,000 seed, and it's considered the shifting of the season. So Tanya says she's going to sow hers. Thank you. And I know there's some more um, that's going to do it. Where is that Shamia Garfield? Uh-uh. Okay, so she... Okay, so she's supposed to be taking me to dinner tonight, so we're we going to talk about this seed tonight over dinner. She want to take me out for my birthday. Pastor, want to take you out for your birthday. I ain't no cheap date. <laughs> all right, so listen, I'm almost there. Listen, come on, another minute. If you all, because some of y'all said you've never done it. And I remember Pastor Eric Mason said, when a challenge comes before you, Sometimes if you tell the Lord yes, he'll give you the provision. So listen, sometimes he will give you the provision. And that's the thing that we have to see that the Lord is always going to give us the provision. So you all this morning, I want to challenge you to sow that seed. And I know you guys say, I don't know if I can do that. Listen, tell me, let me tell you something. Listen, I know about sowing seeds into leaders that I never received back from leaders. But I guarantee you this, I received it back from my assignment. All right? 
So I know the Lord is going to do some awesome things on here. Yes, he will. He's going to do it. Listen, okay, I'm finished this morning. If there's somebody else, um, there are some other ones that have already committed. And let me tell you something. God is going to do some awesome things. And I thank you all for, listen, being public this morning. So, Tiffany, I know you'll write those names down. And listen, we're not going to harass you about that seed. You Listen, we're not going to say, hey, do this this week, do this this week. No, we're just going to say at the end of May, just keep your word. Sister Sean McNeil said yes. Sean, you had to think about that thing for a moment like, mm. but watch what the Lord opens up for you. I'm telling you. And the reason that I'm doing it, l listen, I told my brother Prince yesterday, I said, I'm a pastor and a leader, but I have to take also, I have to listen when someone tells me something. And my friend, Apostle Jonathan Fowler, when I went, we were talking and he said, man of God, he said, you need to sow a thousand dollar seed. And I'm like, man, I, everyone know me on the road. Watch this. Watch this. He said, watch this. I, I need you to understand, said, on the road, usually people who are close to me, just in my musician pit for three days, that's over $4,500. When my musicians come play for me, I take care of the travel, I take care of the hotel, I take care of their food, and I usually pay them over. That's just for the pit. That's just for the musician. That's that's 4,500 straight out. We take care of everything. We make sure they good, that they have no complaints for not flowing in the spirit. But when Pastor Fowler said, he said, man, you need to sow a thousand dollar seed. He said, and watch what God opens up for you. And he said, I did it. He said, and things just started opening up. And he just got into another building. He just purchased. He said, I went from renting to owning. And I said, well, if God did it for my brother, I said, then watch this. I said, then I'm going to sow into someone and watch God do it for me. And I told Minister Thornton, I said, I'm not going to sow it into my own ministry. I said, because that'll just be me receiving the money back. I said, no, I'm going to sow it to somebody so I can feel that seed leave me, Tanya. I can feel it leave me. So listen, you all that are committed to that, if there's any more, because there's some of you all who said you never did it. I want you to know that that is not going to break you. None of us can live off a thousand dollars for a month. Who can live off a thousand dollars for a month? Nobody. Nobody can live off a thousand dollars for a month. By the time you pay rent, get food, get gas, car payment, and show, you done. You done. Nobody can live off a thousand dollars a month. So we're gonna sow that one time seed this year and watch what the Lord do. So on this morning, Father, thank you even now that they have something to give. And Father, we thank you that what they are sowing, they are gonna see you become seated in places that they never imagined. According to Ephesians 3 and 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think through the power that worketh in us. Now, Father, I'm praying for my brothers and my sisters' faith that, God, that they will do just like you told Peter, that they will launch out into the deep and see that that one net is not enough for what you imagine for their life. Father, we pray for manifold blessings and harvest in this season. And Father, we give you the glory and we give you the honor in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Listen, you all have a blessed day. Tomorrow is my birthday and I'm not one of those preachers that take off. I will be here tomorrow morning. All right. Sister Nicole is going to help me out this week. I'm going to try to get her in here. Um, we have some situations that will probably be uncomfortable for her. So I don't want her. I don't want to put her in that situation. Um, and we understand what it is. But listen, I will be here on tomorrow preaching the gospel on my birthday. But we agree and decree that God is changing lives one conversation at a time. Once again, when you get the opportunity, I want you to go to brotherstrong.com and support my brother Jeremy Wright. And I believe this will be a blessing to you. Listen, if you don't, if you don't wear the shirt, buy it for somebody else. All right. So listen, you all have a blessed day and I will see you all tomorrow morning at 730. When we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. This is the new single by Mal new single by Malachi Singleton, Destiny. I live to love you and I fight for you daily. And if you know me, you know that I love you. And remember, we always win, even when it looks like we lose it. See you all tomorrow morning.